36 for the dope. 36 for the dope, and I keep it for the low. If you ain't got everything, I can front your dope. Front your dope, front your dope. I can be at your front door with that fucking tool if it run off, though. I don't give a fuck. I be on some fucking hot shit, hot shit. Off about tweaking with my last bitch. Last bitch, last bitch, she can kiss my ass shit. I don't give a fuck, get money in that jack shit. Pull up in that jack, then I pull up in that beam. Pull up in that beam, or then I pull up in that I was actually in front of the computer doing music and I scrolled through my Instagram and I saw somebody say R.I.P. Fredo and I'm like huh? Nah this might be one of them hoax things so I get to search every day and then I still thought it was a hoax then it finally popped up from somebody I knew right now so it's my boy Young Chop. I heard about Fredo passing I was in the studio Someone sent me a text. I heard about his passing. I was in um, Bogota, Colombia, and um, I got a, a message about him passing. Well, I knew about him being sick before I was in the hospital, so I was just basically hoping that his health got better from whatever was causing the illness, you know? So people got all kind of little speculations, but whatever, if those speculations was right or wrong, I just would have wanted him to correct it, you know what I'm saying? And, Unfortunately, your muscle's too late. I just felt sad because he hasn't lived to his fullest yet. He was kind of just getting started, you know what I'm saying? So it made me sad and it made me real sad. I was shocked, man, because he's young, you know, he's my age, you know? Man, I'm finna be 27 on March 19, you feel me? He's 27, young. You know, he just had a baby. I got babies, you know, and I know how it is. I ain't ready to leave him right now. Who gonna take care of them and raise them? You know, it's sad, you know, he young. I mean, you don't wish death on nobody, you know, so I encourage all to change their diets. Go vegan, go alkaline, you know what I'm saying? I, if I get messages of something that can save our lives, I forward it to everybody, I post it for the world, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's just, I just, it's an unfortunate situation. It bothered me. The reason that I was bothered by it is because I had the, uh, had the pleasure of uh, actually meeting the young man and uh, conversing with him. He had an interesting conversation. And the thing was, it was at Salaam Restaurant of all places, which is owned by Minister Farrakhan in the Nation of Islam. And this was a, a summit that brought a lot of people together, like a lot of guys from different street organizations, as well as different neighborhoods and, you know, within the rap community. And Fredo was there. He was there because he was concerned. Everybody fucked up. I was a little bit in high everybody, you know, like an outstanding level shit, like good on every block type shit. It's only a selected few of us that like that. First of all, when you talk about entertainment, drugs and alcohol goes hand in hand with that. That would never stop, you know? So I think. If people are going to do drugs, if they learn to do things in moderation, if they're going to do it, I think they would be okay. I, I think it's crazy how a prescribed drug will kill you quicker than crack and dope fiends out here doing crack in 11, 75 years old. Crackhead can tell you stories from 50 years ago, but a prescribed drug will kill you more. So, you know, that should tell you something right there. I don't, I don't deal with it. I incorporate it in my music, you know, just to rhyme sometimes. But I don't deal with it. You know, I don't think everybody should take everything that music say to the head. You know, just like if a song say, shoot you in a song, shoot you. You should take that to the head, you know. I don't blame, you know, to each his own. Every person, you know, know right from wrong. And if you know using drugs is going to do bodily harm, don't do it. I don't care who telling you they do it. They system, not your system. A lot of people don't know smoking weed 
can trigger off um, different signals in your brain and, and send you in a state of depression. You know, a person with bipolar not supposed to be smoking no weed because it sent them into depression, but they smoke it anyway. And then when they act out and do something, first thing the, the, the hospital say is diagnose them with being crazy. Growing up in Chicago and all over America, man, if you living in a neighborhood where people are dying and people that you would see every day, they no longer here with you, you can be traumatized and you could be looking for some sort of med medication or something to uh, offer you an escape from what you're going through. And not to say that that was his case because I didn't know him well enough to speak on his life, but that seems like a, a, com a commonality uh, amongst many people nowadays, you know? And I feel like, man, if you can die from it, man, you probably shouldn't be doing it. You know, and it's easy to say that, but we have to create different outlets for people to channel that type of energy, frustration or anger or just fear or whatever it is they're dealing with or trauma. We have to have a constructive conversation and we got to have, you know, outlets for these people. It's your boy, welcome to man, long live my nigga Fredo. Just want to let the family know I'm rolling with y'all a thousand percent, man, definitely.